I was lucky. I grew up in a loving family with enough money to get by and then some. Not everyone is as fortunate as I have been. Some kids are ignored by their parents, some are mistreated by their parents, and some just don't get to see their parents at all. Now, in the last speech, Ms. Easton demonstrated the mental and physical impact of this abuse and neglect, but let's take a moment to look at the societal impact as well. These kids have no one to help them grow, and so their decision-making skills suffer. What's the result? As of last December, according to NeighborhoodScout.com, Champaign County is less safe than 89% of Illinois. Your risk of being the victim of a property crime is 1 in 33. If we want to change those numbers, we must combat crime at its source, the loss of supportive family for young children. First, I'll talk about how the loss of supportive family impacts the crime rate, then tell you about an organization that exists to be family for at-risk kids, and finally, I'll show you how easy it is to donate to the organization that I've supported f periodically for about a year now, Cunningham Children's Home. Now, how does the lack of supportive family contribute to crime? Well, According to an article from the Department of Justice in 1994, families serve as one of the strongest socializing forces in a young person's life. Families teach their kids to be respectful, to control their emotions, and teach them that they can't always get what they want right away. Studies indicate that positive parenting clearly affects whether children will or will not become delinquent. According to the National Bureau of Economic Research, as of April 9th, 2019, child maltreatment roughly doubles the probability that that child will become a criminal. So we see how important the family is for the futures of young people, but what is it that Cunningham Children's Home does to give at-risk kids hope? Well, Cunningham Children's Home was founded in 1895 as part of the will of Judge Joseph and Mary Cunningham to be a safe and nurturing home for kids in need. I first encountered Cunningham when I created and ran a theater program designed to help the decision-making skills of the kids there. I have since returned as an actor in a production of The Comedy of Errors by William Shakespeare that my theater company presented there. A normal day at Cunningham looks pretty regular, according to their chaplain, Reven, Reverend Gay Crede. We start off with breakfast and school in the morning, uh, both provided by the home itself, then move on to some fairly familiar after-school activities, such as sports and creative writing. But there are also some activities that are more tied to the kids' specific needs, such as an anger and impulse management class, and what's called a feelings and emotional roller coaster support group. Once a week, the kids meet with the therapist, and once a day, they take something that is called a therapeutic assignment with staff, talking about how to deal with issues in their day-to-day -day life, or even talking about successes that they've had during the day. I haven't seen much quantitative data for, from Cunningham. They prefer to show their work in the stories of their residents. The following were sent to me by their chaplain. Pamela lived at Cunningham in the 1980s and credits her experience for the life she has since built for herself. She is a loving mother of five grown children, lives in Peoria, and has a good job. She said, I've learned from Cunningham that you're only a failure if you don't retry what you failed the first time. Cunningham retried with me many times over. They never gave up on me. Before coming to Cunningham, the boy who I will call David lived a life of chaos. His mother's addictions controlled her life, leaving David often without supervision. He was a good student, but his pain sometimes manifested itself into unpredictable fits of rage. First, counseling was offered. Then it was thought that a combination of hospitalization and medication would work, but his behavior only escalated. Finally, David was referred to Cunningham Children's Home. In the two years that David spent there, 
he learned different ways to deal with the challenges of life. Instead of flaring up when he's upset, he lets it out by doing things he enjoys, such as dancing and shooting hoops. He talks ab uh, about his worries with his therapists, then writes them down and seals them away in what he calls a worry box. In the summer of 2017, uh, David returned home, his mother drug and alcohol free, for she had been taking therapy as well during that time. But imagine how it could have ended. Pamela could have fallen into drugs or worse. It's unlikely that David would have been able to control his rage uh, if it were not for Cunningham. He could have been a part of a new generation of criminals. So now you see what a need we have for organizations such as Cunningham Children's Home. But how do we help? Well, donating is simple. If you want to donate money, then you just need to go to their website and there's a place listed there for you to donate. But if you're like me, you don't have a whole lot of money. But what you might have is a talent that you can use. For me, it was theater. I was an actor, and so I used my acting to help the kids at Cunningham. But you could be part of an orchestra, a sports team, or a club. That, uh, Cunningham would love to have you. Anything to improve the lives of their residents there. I hope you see now why Cunningham Children's Home is needed, how it helps, and how easy it is to donate. We have a duty to help our community thrive, and the best way to do that is to start with our young people. As Pamela said, the youth who live here today need to know first and foremost that I know what they're feeling, what they're going through. They are me, and I am who they can become. Thank you.